Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. And this is the second video in a three-part video of weaving log cabin placemats. And in my last video, I wound the warp holding two threads at the same time to wind that warp. And in this video, we're going to be warping it onto the loom. In the previous video, I had mentioned I was going to be using my rigid huddle loom since we're focusing on plain weave. Unfortunately, I forgot that I don't have a 12 dent reed for my rigid huddle loom and this will be wound at uh, 12 ends per inch. So I'm going to be using my eight shaft Ashford table loom and we'll just take six of the shafts off and use the two front shafts. I thought this might be a really good opportunity to demonstrate um, warping front to back. So typically on my big uh, 12 shaft floor loom, I warp back to front, but some of you out there might want to try warping uh, front to back or um, that's your preferred method and want to see that demonstrated in one of my projects. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that with this one. So I've gone ahead and um, put my warp on the leaf sticks and then um, I'm going to, oh, that one's backwards, I need to flip this one around. Um, then we'll kind of secure the leaf sticks uh, to the front here um, thread them through the reed, and then we will turn the whole thing around um, and thread the heddles, and then we will attach to the back beam and wind on. All right, so I've got my um, warp secured here to my loom, and uh, I've wrapped the the warp bout around the breast beam so that it won't slide off. Um, I've got my lee sticks right here um, secured so that they can't slide around and I have cut the loops um, on my warp ends because we are going to thread one thread through each dent in the 12 dent reed. So I am going to thread these um, light, or I'm sorry, dark, light, dark, light. And when we warped it, we warped it that way. Um, so it should be fairly easy to just uh, grab these and um, pull them through. And if they look like they are not presenting as dark light, uh, that's okay. Just be sure to pull them through as dark light. And be sure you are getting the ones underneath. And with it being a table loom, it's a little hard to have the room that I'm used to on my floor loom, but we'll make it work. All right, so now we have so that's our first section, and now we have our um, zinger that we're going to put in. Now I am going to um, thread the zinger as a um, dark red. So we've been doing dark light, dark light, dark light, and now I'm going to thread 
um, dark and see I've got four threads in the same um, cross here so it's kind of confusing but uh, we're just going to kind of pull this apart see this one seems to be falling furthest to the right so we'll just say dark And then we'll grab the red one and pull it through. And now we're going to switch to uh, light dark. And we'll do light dark for 10. All right, so we've done 10 repeats of that. And now we will switch to the dark light again and do 10 repeats of that. So you'll notice that we're going to have two darks that are right next to each other. And that will create a frame for um, the log cabin. All right, so we just did 10 sets of light or dark light. Now, uh, in order to balance the log cabin, for the dark light, dark light, we need to uh, have this dark one. And then the framing is a dark, so that's why we have two darks in a row. Now we can go back to uh, threading light, dark, light, dark, and we'll just continue this all the way across. Okay, so um, I missed a dent right here. So I am just going to fix that and it's easy enough to just reach through the correct dent grab the thread that is right next to it and pull it over hopefully I didn't do that in any other ones it's kind of hard to see that small dent If I did, I can um, fix it when I tie onto the front apron rod. Okay, and then we end on a dark. Go ahead and secure these so they don't pull out. And now I can uh, turn the loom around um, and then we can uh, start threading the heddles. Okay, so we have the loom turned around and uh, I had to move some heddles around and then I realized because my project is almost the full width of my loom width, I had too many heddles on the other shafts and they would have gotten in the way. So rather than moving or taking the heddles off of the shafts, I'm gonna try just, I've removed all the shafts that I'm not using. So I'm only using shafts one and two. So I just took shafts three through eight off, but I've started threading and um, it's a simple threading. It is, you know, just one, two, one, two. And the nice part about threading from uh, front to back is that you don't need your cross once you get the uh, threads into the reed because the reed shows what your pattern should be. Um, I'm just grabbing each thread out of the next uh, dent in my reed and I am threading it into the heddle. So we're just going to continue on in that manner. So um, we're just gonna grab and this is a 3-2 Mercerized Cotton. So it's pretty 
large considering what I normally work with is 8-2 cotton. Um, and as some of you probably remember from uh, one of my live feeds that I did is th when you're measuring yarn, the size of the yarn gets larger with a smaller number. So 3-2 cotton is two plies of number three cotton. 8-2 cotton is two plies of number eight cotton. Number eight cotton uh, takes um, a certain number of yards to make uh, one pound. So I don't remember off the top of my head what the poundage is, but let's say I could probably figure out if I stopped threading, <laughs> but so if a pound of cotton, if it takes, um, if one pound of cotton, a number one, takes uh, 150 yards, let's say, or let's say for rounding, say 100 pounds or 100 yards to make one pound. So if you have a th number three cotton, it will take 300 yards to make that one pound. If you have a number eight cotton, it will take 800 yards to make that one pound. So the thinner the yarn, the more it takes to make one pound. And that's why the smaller the number, the larger the diameter of your yarn. So the other thing that I pay attention to when I'm doing this is um, to make sure that I am doing um, one, two, one, two, uh, I pay attention to if I'm taking a uh, light colored thread on one and a dark on two or a dark on one and a light on two. Uh, so remember it switches every 20 threads. Um, so right here, I just did two darks together so that I know I need to now switch from light or from dark light to light dark and do that for the next 20 threads. And I'll go back through and double check it um, when I'm done threading here just to make sure that I didn't miss anything, get it messed up. And um, it's pretty easy to do with something like this because I can just lift the individual shafts, um, shaft one and shaft two, and I should be able to see the color switch uh, every 10 threads because there's 10 darks and 10 lights. And so every 10 darks, it should switch back to having light on uh, being raised by shaft one and vice versa. Okay, so I started tying on here to the back uh, apron rod. I guess it's not really called an apron rod, uh, the warp rod. So uh, I tied on the first two outside ones. Um, and because I couldn't really put a lot of tension on it, um, because the front is still loose, uh, I just tried to make sure that I had the same length um, on both sides. Uh, there's two bouts that make this up. So it was a lot easier to uh, figure out how long um, these two needed to be. If I'd had more bouts, if this was a wider loom, I 
probably would have had to do that with the other belts also. But I got these two outside ones on. And then I uh, put my weights um, down off my table here. So um, I use uh, basically water bottles with a snitch knot on the um, warp and that provides the weight. So now I can just weight that off the back and then I can pull the warp coming through the uh, reed and the heddles and straighten everything out and then I know that I have about the right length. And some of these are a little bit shorter than others, probably the way I cut the um, the loops, but it's fine, we'll work with it. And so I'll just go ahead and finish tying these on. And I'm gonna tie these on in bouts of um, one inch. So that is 12 threads. So two, two, four, six, I've got an extra one there. And you know, these don't have to be tensioned. Um, we're just tying onto the back rod so that we can wind on. All right, there. So now we're all tied onto the back and uh, we can start winding on. All right, so I have everything tied on. I have my bouts weighted <clears throat> off of that side of the loom and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start winding on. I've got my paper here, um, my warp protector, and we will go ahead and start winding. <clears throat> slipping. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and start placing this. I've mentioned in previous videos I'm horrible at getting this straight. So we'll see how I do here. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. So I'll go ahead and take the water bottles off and then we'll wind on a little more and then tie on to the front apron rod. All right, so we've got the loom turned back around. Um, so this is the front, here's the apron rod, and I'm going to lash on uh, for this warp. I, I like lashing on, it works quite well for me. And um, so we'll just do that. So I'll just tie a loop um, on that end. And um, I think our cat wants in. Hello, Boxeroo. Are you coming in? Hmm? All right. <laughs> my crotchety old cat. And so I've got my Lee stick still uh, set up here. And this will just help me find my loops. So I am going to do um, six threads at a time. I'm just going to get the threads that I don't want out of there. So I'll just pass that through and then bring and go over the apron rod under, 
get the next six threads and I'm going to make sure that those six threads are a similar um, length. Every once in a while you get one that's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, and I don't want that when I'm lashing on. So we will just, oh, and I missed that thread there. So I missed this one because it uh, falls kind of in between. And I actually, and it falls there. Um, and you can see it's a little bit longer. So I'm going to take and only go through that one loop. And Pull these up, go around, and then I'm going to go through just this one and lash that. And that will give me a correct tension on there. Now I can go back to doing three threads as long as they're the same length, which they are. Okay, and then there's an oddball here that because I have an odd number of ends, I have that final loop there. So we'll just put him on his own lash. All right. Okay, so now I'm just going to Take this around a few times. And then I will come back and uh, tighten up uh, all of the these. But first I'm going to now take out my leaf sticks. We don't need those in there anymore. All right, so it's very loose and goosey, so we'll go ahead and just tighten up the tension on the warp itself. Um, that's much better. Um, this is a little bit looser over here. Um, yeah, so we'll just kind of pull these and it will help even them out. that tight. Okay, so now we can cut that cord and wrap it around it through there. Wrap it back. And then we'll just tie it on to this one. All right. Okay, our tension is pretty good. We'll just kind of push on it, even it out. Hopefully I don't have any missed dents. I don't see any missed dents. Perfect. 
All right, so now we can wind the bobbins and start weaving. Okay, so in the next video, we will get to see the magic of plain weave in a log cabin structure when we finally start weaving these placemats. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, join, tell all your friends about my channel. Thanks for watching and happy weaving. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. <sighs> yeah, shush. So in the next video, we'll get to see the magic of plain weave in a log cabin structure. If you enjoyed watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, okay, stop.